Yo, what's going on, everybody, man? This your boy, Marcus Elbow. Welcome back to Elbow Media Studios. And if this is your first time, I appreciate you clicking on this video, man, because guess what? All we do over here is talk about NPC stuff, iOS stuff. We talk about the Akai Force. We talk about DAWs. We talk about the music business. And plus, we got the Beat League, just in case you want to join that and make some beats and chop it up with people that love music just like you. Hey, yo, check this out, man. Go ahead on and hit that subscription button right now because it's kind of odd. Only 36% of the people that watch these videos here at our channel yeah, hit the subscription button. I, I don't understand that. Are we doing something wrong? Let me know, man. Get, get down in the comments and let me know why you didn't hit that subscription button, especially after you watch this video. And guess what? All we do over here is keep it crump, man. Let's go. Nope. Nope. Elbow Media Studio. Today we're going to be looking at the Akai Force and we're going to be talking about 10 things that every beginner Akai Force user needs to know. Let's go ahead on and get to it, man. It's going to be very, very quick and very, very cool. All right, come on, let's roll. I'm going to go ahead on and jump right into it. If you just bought the machine and you, you have not figured out um, how to get started, we're going to leave a video card up here somewhere that you could go ahead on and... Uh, and go ahead and watch that video and get started. But this is going to be about 10 tips that every every Akai user must know. You just got to know these things. You know what I mean? First thing is, whenever you first come into a project and you're getting ready to get started and you're from a, you got a blank slate, hold down knobs and hit this screen button right here. Okay? When you do that, what's going to end up happening is, is when you're in the matrix, you're going to get all the information that you need on your your cue links, you know what I mean? Or your data dials or whatever the heck you want to call them, like your tempo, time correct, and things like that. So you can actually get to those things relatively quick. This is something that I do every time I open up the force, as soon as I start a project. I think they should just default to that. But, hey, you know, I don't work at a guy. So, But, yeah, hit that knobs button, hold it down, and go ahead and hit that screen. You'll thank me later, okay? Tip number two is going to be holding down the tap button so you can get the tempo. Now, the crazy thing about this, since you did hit the screen, you can get to the tempo right here. But just in case you decided that you didn't want to do that and that's not what you want to do, or if you're inside of the mixer, for instance, you're not going to see anything that's pertaining to a tempo because you're not on that screen you're not in that area you're not in the matrix so all you got to do is hold down tempo and then it'll pop up and you can use your data uh, data dial to make your tempo changes and anything you want to do right there release it and then you're good to go all right tip number three is going to be how to get to the parameters inside of your plugin I, I don't know how many times people ask this. I don't know why Akai just didn't have some type of parameters button. But anyway, the shortcut to do that, if you're on a plug-in track like we're on right here, all you have to do is hold down, edit, and hit that corresponding track. So if I hit that, boom, we're inside of the parameters, and I can go inside of here, and I can move around. I can make adjustments. I can even go to different plugins uh, if I want to and, and do anything I need to do when it comes to working with a plugin. Okay? Tip number four, okay, is going to be going to the drum mixer level, okay? So you already see I'm in the mixer here. And if I hit on one of my drum kits here, right, let's just hit on this one right here, right? Now, I can mix every pad in here individually, you know what I mean? But you can't do that in the hierarchy of the mixer parameter. You need to go a level down to the sub mix. The way you do that is hold down shift and hit mixer. And when you do that, now you can go to the next level and you can start mixing your sounds individually okay now when it comes to stemming out though just just a small caveat it's not going to stem out that way so just remember that but if you want to create let's just say you want to add a whole bunch of drums to just one track you can mix them here in the sub mix okay and then to get back all you got to do is just hit mixer and then you're good to go okay all right tip number five is going to be hold down the record button to change your clip uh, count or your bar count right so let's say if you're inside a clip and whenever you hit clip let's just go to a new track real quick let's get out of the matrix we're going to create a new track we're just going to call it a drum or whatever and whenever you go to create a new clip this is what you're going to see okay you're going to see four bars and i know sometimes people say you know i've been asked this question how do you change the bars it seems like it's always either stuck at two or it's stuck at four the way you do that let's just go back to the matrix all you have to do is hold down the record button here right go to settings here and there's 
there's some different parameters that you can change in here that can make a big difference, okay? Uh, you can you got all different type of things. You can record button on pad. You can overdub. You got fixed length, uh, length and you got single. You got some things in here that you need to experiment with. But right here is where you could change that ball length right here, okay? Once you do that, you go ahead and hit it. Now when you go ahead and hit that clip, now you got eight balls you can start with. So this could be two, eight, four, however you want to do it, okay? That's how you do that, all right? Tip number six is going to be how to assign different tracks to your mixer fader, okay? Which is, we all know the mixer fader is dope on the Akai Force. But in order for you to do that, let's go ahead and pop into the mixer, right? And as you can see right here, I already have a few things assigned here, okay? But the way you do that, let's just say I didn't have anything assigned here, so I could just go ahead and hit the button that I used to assign them again, and then it, it would clear it out. But right now I have this beat, and I'm gonna turn it down a little bit, okay? Now, if I want to essentially break this beat down, have all my leads and all my ambient sounds and textures on one side of the fader and then have my drums on the other side of the fader it's very easy to do all i have to do is go in here and assign them i can just hit a for this one because a is going to be to the left side b is the right just everything that's on this left side i'm going to change it over these two tracks i'm going to put them on b and now when i hit the fader i just took the drums out this is great for live performances, trust me. And it's great for when you stream it too, you know what I mean? And it's dope, I mean, let's just keep it 100. Let go to drums. And then you just bring it all back in in the middle, right? You know you're gonna love that, but I did do a tutorial on that as well in more depth, more detail. If you wanna watch that, check it out, all right? Next is going to be, this is gonna be number seven. It's gonna be whole copy and select a lane when duplicating. Now, this may sound simple, but when it comes to uh, creating kind of like an, a lane arrangement, that's what we're gonna call it, but essentially, how do you wanna launch your tracks and in order for you to be able to start creating that it's very simple all you need to do is hit the launch button right and then as you can see i had all of my tracks light up that's corresponding here if i go to the matrix you can see right here if i push play all of those tracks are right here in the front okay now if i want to start trying to you know do something with this beat maybe arrange it in a certain way that when i launch it i launch an intro i launch a verse i launch a chorus all i have to do is hold down copy hit the lane and then hit the next lane next lane next lane and this will start giving me the different lanes in order for me to start breaking things down and if i want to start breaking them down like i gotta do is hold delete delete those first three now i'm essentially doing what i was doing with the mixer if i hit lunch the drums are gone right and then i'm going to just launch the second lane in order for me to get this arrangement going just like that and I can continue to keep building. And what's really dope about the Akai Forest is that now that I have the basis of the beat, I can start using additional tracks to essentially make the beat even more abstract, even more detailed based on the different lanes and which on how I want to launch it. Uh, you know, for instance, the hook or the chorus or whatever, I can start building my track that way. This is a great workflow about, that's what I love about the Force is this workflow right here. Number eight is going to be hold down the record, then hit the arrangement. And you know about that function. That's the function that came back a couple of updates ago. But this is how you record into the arranger, okay? The way you do that, all you got to do is go back and hold that record button like we did earlier, and then hit that record to arrange, and then you can start recording into the range. You cannot just hit record record and start recording into the ranger that you just can't do it okay you have to tell the machine that you want to actually record in the arranger and the way you do that is by holding it down and then hitting that record to arrange and then you will start recording into the arranger okay that's just just trust me the, the they may seem like simple tips but trust me you're gonna thank me later i promise you that okay all right number nine is gonna be hold down shift and then hit the metrodome in order to turn it on and turn it off. I'm telling you, you'd be surprised. I could not figure this out. I was the other day, I was with a client and he asked me that. He said, Hey, I bought my uh, Aka Force used and the metrodome won't turn off. And I'm thinking, Okay, where is it at? For some reason, I couldn't see that day. I just couldn't find it because I would have figured it out. But if I go ahead and push play here and then I hit shift and I hit metrodome. Now you hit a metrodome in there, okay? 
And this is good for live people that play live and stuff like that. If they want that metrodome in there so that he can have something to use to, to guide them through. Okay? Just hold shift and hit metrodome again down here at the bottom. And it's off. Okay? Yeah. All right? So that is how you do that. All right? Number 10 is going to be how to add perform effects to the master bus now you can add perform effects to anything but what i love about what akai did was they gave you some preset perform effects to where you can just load them up quick and then just straight get to it let me show you how to do that if you hit the master right here at the bottom right right and it's going to take you to the master outputs right you want to put this on the master outputs right and the way you do that let me see let's go to the mixer here all right there we go all right once i hit that master output and it takes me to all of my, my outputs that I have behind the machine. What you can do is just hit the effects here. Now, I already have some on there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm just going to delete these. And you hit this little Akai folder here. Okay, you see it right there? If you hit that folder and then you go into performance, you can load up all of these different performances. It really depends on what you want to load. You can all load up. These are like little profiles. You know what I mean? That was created by Akai or someone at Akai. If you hit that one right there, as you can see, it loaded up all of these effects. So if I just go back to the matrix, right? And remember what's on your, your data, your, your, your little Q links here, right? Represents whatever you're pretty much have on your knobs set up for whatever your knobs are set up for So if I hold the knobs and I'm gonna take it off screen this time and I'm gonna put it on track effects because that's what I want to see Then all of those performance parameters are right here. Let's listen to it These are more like little DJ performances. But what's really dope is, is that if I went back into my master, right? And then I went back up in here and I said, I didn't like those. I can just delete them and then I can come back and I can try something else. Maybe like the repeat uh, tape stop or repeat stop delay. If that's what I want to do, then I can just go ahead and launch that again. pretty dope man so this would be great for a live performance if you're if you're just really trying to impress your friends or a client or whatever or you just really want to put some effects on you know and you want to record going to like a two track or something like that now in the future i know i know the questions are going to come in the comments man how do you record this well there's a weird way on how to do this uh and i'm not going to get into it in this video okay one one of these videos i'm going to make a way to the that and there needs to be a workaround because you cannot record what i just did because it's on the master route okay you would literally have to put it on each track and then do it that way but i'm going to make a video for that all right so don't trip we're going to put that together listen man i appreciate y'all coming by and checking out these 10 tips uh for the akai force today i really hope you learned something you know what i mean because this this is really what it's all about no doubt you know what i mean really just getting stronger getting better with the akai force and learning how to use it you know what i mean to to your best ability and having all of that stuff right there ready for you uh when you're ready to get it rocking and rolling so listen man don't forget to hit that subscription button. Remember, only 36% of the people that watch these videos subscribe. I, I don't really know why. I don't know what we're doing wrong. I think we're adding value. So if you found value in this video, do me a favor. Go ahead on and hit that subscription button. Hit that like button. Because when you hit that like button, it allows for other people. And it allows for YouTube to see that. And it allows for other people to definitely get their hands on this video. And maybe learn something and help them get better at using their favorite equipment which is the Akai Force, man, all right? All right, man, listen. Y'all have a good one, man. Come back and holler at me next go round. You know what I mean? And I love making music for y'all. And I love streaming, man. And definitely go join the Facebook group. Come be a part of the B-League. We definitely got that thing popping. And it's a beautiful thing, all right? I will catch y'all in the next video. You know I will. You, you know I will, all right? All right, man, one love. Your boy Elbow out. Catch you later.